Hello and welcome friends. In the last uh, session that we had, we were uh, talking about uh, advertising and I gave you a basic introduction. And then we also talked about the process in brief. So we talked about all these uh, four steps in brief. Now is the time for us to take up all these steps one by one in detail. So today the agenda would be to discuss the first two uh, steps in the process. The setting of advertising objectives and the decision regarding advertising budget. So should we start? Right. So let us talk about setting the advertising objectives. So where does this flow from? It flows from the prior decisions regarding target market, market positioning and promotion mix. What do we mean by this? See, you must have read in marketing that you start with segmentation and then you target the market. So you divide the whole market into different segments. For example, if I take up example of Maruti Suzuki, they have divided the whole market into different different segments probably based on income levels and they are not targeting the ultra rich that is being done by Mercedes Benz or Audi they are targeting those who are somewhere in the middle income bracket so that is the segment that they are targeting so they have first divided the whole market into different different segments using the income criteria and then they are targeting those who are falling in the middle income segment. So this is how you move from segmenting the market to targeting a particular segment in the market. Right? I'll give you another example. Johnson & Johnson No Tears. There's a soap which is not meant for the entire market. So Johnson & Johnson has done what? They have segmented the whole market into different different segments. And now they are targeting the babies, the young ones no tears show so when you use this soap this does not cause any tears so they are targeting this particular segment the newborns, infants and their mothers so that the mothers may buy this soap for their newborns this is fine so they are not targeting those who are looking for freshness they are not targeting those who are looking for germ protection they are targeting these young ones and their mothers so this is how you divide the whole market you segment the whole market into different different segments and then you decide which particular segment you are going to go for so this is known as segmentation so once you have decided your target market then you have to do what you have to do segmentation uh, I'm sorry once you have decided your target market then you have to go for market positioning so the first step was segmentation, then second was targeting and the third one is market positioning. Now what do we mean by this? Market positioning basically means what position you want to acquire in the mind of the customer. Khushbudar Antiseptic Cream, Borolin. So Borolin wanted to be known as Khushbudar having fragrance antiseptic cream. It was not looking at a position of merely being a antiseptic cream it was looking at a position of kushbudar antiseptic cream this was the perception that it wanted to create in the mind of its customers so that is what we mean by positioning in fact the definition of positioning is this is not positioning is not what you do to the product it is what you do to the perception of the product in the target audience so how does the target audience perceive your product that is positioning for example fuel economy now this is the positioning that Maruti Suzuki has tried to have they are trying to have this kind of an image among the target audience so that is their positioning right department of business administration wants to position itself as an institution which provides quality education and focuses on hard work and discipline so this is the kind of positioning we are trying to acquire in the mind of the target audience so this is what positioning is all about you might have seen this 
recent example, recent advertisement campaign by Vico Vajradinti. So, what are they trying to acquire? What are the what is the position that they are trying to acquire in the mind of the customer? They are using Alia Bhatt. So, they are basically talking about the toothpaste being good for the teeth. So, that is the kind of position they are trying to acquire in the mind of the customer. So, this is what positioning is all about. What perception you want to build about your brand among the target audience. And once you have decided this, you started with segmentation and then you targeted the particular segments of the market targeting which we call and then market positioning and then we also decided what the promotion mix was if you remember in unity 2 we have talked about the promotion mix as a whole so we discuss all the five elements also there and we discuss the promotion mix as a whole now once you have decided your promotion mix within that promotion mix what is the contribution of advertising this is going to be your next step right so that is why it has been mentioned here that uh, the advertising object is basically flow from target market market positioning and promotion mix now what kind of objectives can be there please understand there can be different kinds of objectives that an advertisement campaign may have up till now you might have thought that advertising is all about bringing more customers in getting more sales no that is not the case if you can see here you will find out that advertising objectives can be very very different for example one objective could be to create awareness among the target audience so you are not trying to get sales you are not trying to get in customers you are only trying to create an awareness about your product in the market or about your brand in the market so that is called informative advertising so the objective is to just create an awareness then there could be this objective of persuasion so this objective of persuasion is there wherein you are trying to build liking and preference and conviction for your product you want customers to start liking your product then from there to start preferring your product over the other products in the market and then from there be convinced about the quality of your products and about uh, your product being the best in the market and then go on to buy that product so this kind of advertising is known as persuasive advertising where you are trying to convince somebody persuade your target audience then we can also have reminder advertising now what do we mean by reminder advertising reminder is to just to remind the customer about something yaad dilana that is what is reminder so you have to remind the customers to do something to maybe try out a particular product or to purchase the product again so the customer probably has never tried your product so if you want him to try your product if you want him to remember to try your product you will go for reminder advertising on the other hand if you want if he has already bought your product once he is a customer of yours but you want him to purchase the product again so you will remind him so that is a repeat purchase so you are reminding him to make his purchase again to repeat his purchase this kind of advertising is called reminder advertising so depending on the different different objectives you can categorize the advertising into different different categories likewise we can also have reinforcement reinforcement advertising is used to reassure the customers about their product decision many a times when you buy a high involvement product i hope you remember our discussion on high involvement product or high risk purchases in the last few sessions we had discussed this particular term so these kind of purchases involve a lot of risk and there is a chance that after purchasing the product the customer may start doubting his decision so once he has purchased a car and then he sees a different model in the market somebody else driving a different car he starts doubting his decision he starts doubting whether he has taken the right decision so therein comes in 
reinforcement advertising reinforcement advertising reassures the customer that he has taken the right decision right so this kind of advertising is going to be applicable only to those customers who have only recently bought your product on the other hand informative and persuasive advertising is for those who are yet to buy your product the objective for informative advertising is not to obtain sales but to create awareness persuasive you are making the target audience believe in your product and making them buy your product reminder is many a times for those customers who already bought your product so you are you are just reminding them to repeat their purchases again re reinforcement advertising is for those who have already bought your product so depending on the objective you can categorize your advertising into different different types and you can also understand that advertising does not have this one objective of getting sales only there can be other objectives as well now let us talk about one very very important concept which is known as defining advertising goals for measured advertising results now why do we set objectives because we want to assess our performance against these objectives because once you have set these objectives then you can assess whether you have been able to achieve those objectives or not and depending on that you can come to the conclusion whether your advertising has been effective or not and that is why you set objectives right now defining advertising goals for measured advertising results now this is known as the dagmar approach d a g m a r and it was given by rasel kohli and what does this particular approach say it says that you have to be very very specific when you are determining your advertising objectives you have to be very very specific because then only you would be able to make a correct assessment of whether your advertising has been effective or not right so this is what this approach says that you have to be very specific what is the communication task what do you want to communicate what is the message that you want to send across to your target audience then who is the audience and what is the time frame by what particular time you want to achieve a particular objective now let us understand this better by this example now this is an advertising objective which has been framed as per the dagmar guidelines right now please understand what has been written here to increase awareness now this is the communication task what is the communication task to increase awareness about bba in pithodagar region which area now this also has been specified which age group this also has been specified and what is it that we are trying to achieve we are trying to increase the awareness level from currently it is 10% and we want it to increase to 60% so that is being very very specific that is what we mean by being specific now everything has been defined here what is the objective of an advertising campaign this particular advertising campaign wants to do what it wants to increase awareness from current 10% to 60% so it wants to increase awareness six folds right so 10% it is and we are aiming at 60% so very very specific again where in pathologer region who is the audience those who, in, who are in the 16 to 20 year age group so we are being very very specific now here in when we are being very very specific once we have come up with the advertising campaign and implemented it then we can easily measure whether our advertising campaign has been effective or not we will look at this figure we look at whether awareness has increased from 10 to 60% or not if it has increased naturally our advertising campaign has been successful but if it has not increased to this extent from 10% to 60% then our advertising campaign has not been successful so what dagmar basically says is that you have to be very very specific when you are setting your advertising goals advertising objectives don't just say increase awareness be very specific increase awareness among whom who is the target audience right so here the target audience is 16 to 20 years age group in pithodagar region so that is the target audience so we are being very very specific and then from 10 to 60% so we are being very specific the awareness has to be increased from 10 to 60% we are not just saying that it has 
to be just increase it has to be increased from 10 to 60 percent now this is being specific in fact we should have also specified some time frame within two months by january 2021 by the next week so this has to be the level of uh, specificity that you have to use whenever you are writing down your advertising objectives and the ultimate benefit would be that you would be able to assess the effectiveness of your advertising campaign better. Now let us talk about the second step in the process deciding the advertising budget. Now how do you decide the advertising budget? Now again this will again flow from the promotional budget. I hope you remember that in this in our discussion in unit 2 we talked about how you set up your promotional budget right so within that promotion budget you will also earmark a particular proportion for the advertising also so it will basically flow from there only however whenever you are going for advertising you have to keep some important considerations in your mind what are these considerations let's have a look at them which stage your product is in as far as the product life cycle is concerned right for example, if your product is a new product, you are launching the product for the first time or if it is a new technology, for example, smart watches around 5-6 years ago, they were a new technology, right? Or supposing you are bringing out a new brand of automobiles, now that would be a new launch. So that would mean that your product is in the introduction stage, right? So, in the introduction stage, you will have to advertise more and rely less on other elements the promotion makes. So, you will have to dedicate more of your promotional budget to advertising and less to direct marketing or public relations, right? So, basically what we are saying is within promotional budget, how much you are going to earmark for advertising and how much you are going to leave for other elements in the mix that will have to be decided based on these considerations so if your product is in the introductory stage you will have to spend a lot of your budget in advertising rather than trying to spend them on direct marketing or personal selling for example now again in absolute terms the promotional budget right that you have and from which has flown the advertising budget in absolute terms the advertising budget will be more in the growth stage than in the introduction stage so yes in absolute terms in advertising you'll have to spend more while your product is in the growth stage than when it was in the introduction stage i hope you remember our discussion in unit 2 also wherein i talked about these two aspects the absolute term and what we mean by the relative term See, absolute term means how much you have actually spent on advertising campaign. Or relative term means how much you have spent divided by how many units you have been able to sell. So, your expenditure per unit sold. So, if you talk about the growth stage, you will find that you will have to spend much more than the introduction stage in absolute terms. Which means, for example, if you are spending 10 crores in the introduction stage, for advertising you may have to spend 20 crores in the growth stage however the relative terms if you start using you will find that the expenditure would be less in the growth stage than in the introduction stage because in the introduction stage your sales volume are lower on the other hand in the growth stage your sales volumes are higher so though you are spending a larger amount in the growth stage but you are also able to sell more so your expenditure on advertising per unit sold would be less than that in the introduction stage and that is what we mean by the absolute and the relative terms please uh, remember this difference because many a times this kind of a question is asked in various competitions also now let us talk about another important consideration the other important consideration is market share so if you are a new firm in the market if you are a new company which has entered a particular market you have to advertise more because you want to gain market share but you are an already 
entrenched firm you exist in the market and you have been operating in the market for years you are already entrenched you only have to protect your market share you only have to maintain it so naturally if you want to maintain your market share you don't have to spend as much as you would have to spend when you are trying to gain market share is this understood which means let me give an example when jio was launched in india naturally their objective was to gain market share so they must have advertised they must have spent lot more on advertising than airtel or vodafone or idea which were existing market players at that point of time right so gaining market share would require you to spend more in advertising again if you have a larger market share naturally cost per impression would be low what do we mean by impression here impression means how many times your target audience is getting exposed to your ad so cost per impression would be low right if your market share is large because your expenditure would be set would be divided in more number of units that you are going to sell so your cost of impression would be much less if you have a larger market share now let us talk about when there is an increase in the advertising budget when there is a lot of competition you have to spend a lot in advertising and that is why you see these markets industries beverage industries fmcg products there is a lot of competition so many companies are operating their local brands also and that is why they have to advertise heavily again if you want to increase the advertising frequency i hope you know where you need to increase the advertising frequency we'll be talking about it in scheduling also advertising frequency has to be increased when your product is a frequently purchased item or when there is a lot of competition so you want to advertise more frequently so you would probably want to advertise every single hour so advertising frequency whenever there is an increase naturally you will have to increase your advertising budget so for example if you want to increase your advertising frequency daily and you want to advertise in newspapers so every single day you will have to buy ad space in newspapers naturally your expenditure in advertising would increase again if the product is substitutable what do we mean by this coffee is substituted substitutable by tea so the most of these people who use coffee they would not have any problem in switching to tea if let's say the price of coffee increase so when your product is easily substitutable which means customers can easily switch from your product to some different type of product then you will have to advertise more because you don't want your customers to switch because it is easier for them to switch on the other hand if other products cannot substitute your product and the customer has no option but to buy your product when he needs then in that case you don't have to spend a lot of your money in advertising so if the product is substitutable then you will have to spend a lot in advertising right so these are some of the important considerations that you have to keep in mind as far as the various methods of deciding the advertising budget are concerned you can refer to our discussion in unit 2 wherein we talked about the various methods of setting the communication budget setting the promotional budget i hope you remember we talked about the affordable method there competitive parity task and objective method so you can use these same methods here also to decide your advertising budget apart from those methods what you have to keep in mind are these aspects that we have discussed today so thank you very much for your time